After a two-year hiatus, which is a very long time, ladies and gentlemen, we are back in milk. This was an unintentional hiatus that happened when the bull we put Cece out with two years ago went sterile. And so while we waited for a calf the following spring, it never came. Something we've learned in our years on the farm is that you have to pivot quite often. It's so typical that things don't go as planned. We put Cece out with a new bull in a new herd last spring, and she had her calf. This time, Cece was bred to a red Angus bull because she got to hang out in a beef herd of a friend of mine. That means this little guy will grow up having beautiful genetics that we'll be able to use here on our farm. Getting Cece back into the milking stanchion was a little bit of a rodeo. It's good to remember that when you have a dairy animal, you have an animal. It's not a machine. It has a personality. It has good days and bad days. It has particular things that it likes done certain ways. And a dairy cow is a very particular animal. It took us a few days to sort of get back in the saddle and get Cece used to her morning milking routine once again. This year is really fun because we're getting to bring the boys alongside us and they're getting to get hands-on experience milking a cow early in the morning and that's about as beautiful as farm life gets. Hello, my friends. Welcome back to the Cottage Kitchen at the Elliott Homestead. We're away from the barnyard now and into the kitchen, and we're going to put that milk to some really good use. But before we do that, I would like to thank Maiden for sponsoring today's video. Maiden partners with the best raw material providers and multi generational family owned manufacturers in the US, France, the UK, and Italy to build superior kitchen products. Maiden cookware is used in multiple Michelin star kitchens around the world and has received over 100,000 five star reviews. Today, I'm going to be using Maiden stainless clad pans, which are crafted in Italy to make my farmer's cheese. Their five ply stainless steel material is what sets it apart from other pans out there because the five layers allow for superior heat retention, even heating and ease of heat control. The handles are designed to stay cool on the stovetop and the handles really work perfectly to balance out the pan. Their stainless clad cookware can go from the stovetop to the oven up to 800 degrees. And I'm gonna be using this 12 inch made in Italy frying pan to actually make cheese today. You can shop my favorite made in products, including these stainless clad ones and get a 10% discount with your first purchase of over $100 by using the link below the video. All right, today I'm gonna to be making my first cheese of the season, which is going to be a really quick, beautiful little farmer's cheese. This one's really simple um, and a great way to kind of dip your toe into the cheese making world because we're not going to be aging it or really culturing it with anything other than a little bit of yogurt. And it'll be ready pretty much the same day that you make it. It's really soft and mild and just delicious to have alongside garden vegetables. So the cow is back and milk. And I'm so happy to be able to just kind of get to explore playing with milk again, because I find it really, really fun. Um, I have my stainless clad skillet here and I'm going to put the heat on low half a gallon of milk. This is from yesterday's milking. Oop, don't spill, Sherry. Now, obviously I'm using a frying pan, which is not a typical pan that you would use for cheese making, but I actually really love it because the milk heats up quickly and cools down quickly. And anything that we bring into the kitchen, it has to be versatile because our space is limited. Things need to be uh, multifunctional is the word I was looking for. I'm just gonna heat my milk up to about 100, 110 degrees just to get it nice and warm. 
And then I'm going to add in some yogurt and some rennet. The yogurt is going to give us some culture and some flavor, and the rennet is going to set our cheese so that we can strain it and ultimately separate our curds from our whey. All right, my milk is at temperature, and now I'm going to culture my cheese. This is just regular old plain yogurt, and I'm gonna stir it in. This is just gonna help give some flavor to our really, really quick little farmer's cheese here. Now, the very basics of cheese making are that we have a milk and it's been brought up to a temperature. We've added a culture and now we're going to add our rennet. I'm gonna be using animal rennet to set my cheese. This is gonna set our cheese very quickly. So once I put it in, I'm gonna stir it around. Ultimately, the rennet is what sets up our curd. And once we have our curd, we'll let it set for about 40 minutes and then we'll cut it and that will separate our curds from the liquid drain off, which is the whey. You can see, even though I just put this in about 30 seconds ago, if you touch the cheese just gently, it already kind of has set like jello, which is perfect. I'm gonna let it continue to set for about 40 minutes, give that yogurt a little bit of time to culture the cheese, and then we'll cut it. If you look at the edge of my pan now, you can see it really has started to separate. I have liquid on the outside, that's our whey and then I have our white mass on the inside and that is our curd. So the step now is to cut our curd into about quarter inch to half inch squares and then that's going to leach remaining whey out of our cheese. Now that my curd is cut, I'm just gonna let it sit for about another 30 minutes and that's gonna give those curds a, a chance just to cook slightly in the warm way, which will help them to ultimately harden up, leach off whey and set when we put them into our molds. Now that my curd is in, I'm going to let it drain for as long as I can stand it. Hopefully it'll last until dinner time. So about four hours on this side, I'll flip it over to the other side, put it back in the mold and let it go for about another four hours and then it'll be ready to eat. Mm -hmm. 